Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Courtney, and today I'm bringing you my anti-haul number 13. You guys have been asking me to do another anti-haul. You're like, where's your next anti-haul? I thought you were doing one a month. So here I am, and hopefully you'll love it. So number one on my list is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. Now, if you've seen this palette, I mean, it looks like such a snooze fest to me. You have all of these super soft shades that I feel like I've seen before, like lots of like soft peaches, which I do like peach, don't get me wrong. Lots, lots of soft browns. It just looks really tame and boring and like we've seen it all before. I feel like it's a recycled palette. I feel like you can take pieces of like the last three or four Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, put it together and you end up with a soft glam palette. So clearly I am not the target audience for this palette. I'm guessing this palette is probably for bridal makeup artists. I don't think it's for even your average consumer. I think it's for bridal makeup artists who are doing very conservative bridal makeup all day. Um, I have friends who do bridal makeup and they're like, oh yeah, this would be a great palette, except that it doesn't have enough shades for deeper complexions for me. So, you know, I think it's basically meant for light medium skin, but I could be wrong. Next up is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Eyeshadow Palette. Now, when I saw this palette, I was initially like, oh, that kind of looks cool. But then when I started looking at it more, I didn't really feel like the colors were put together in such a way that it looked very cohesive. The hot pink and purple are not impressive. I don't think the formula or pigmentation looks good on those colors. It's got a lot of warm golden repeat shadows. I don't really see how it would add anything to my collection since I already own a lot of quality metallic shadows. Like I love my Urban Decay Heavy Metals palette. So this is one that I'm gonna skip. I would say that if you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch Makeup Struggles. She did this amazing video on how she would recreate palettes or how she would make palettes better. And I would buy every single palette she put out. She's awesome. I'm gonna put a link up here so you can go check out her channel. And I'll put a link in the description box directly to that video that I'm talking about. But her eye for color is amazing. So please go check her out. She rocks. So next up is the Violet Voss Hashtag Palette. When I saw Violet Voss teasing a palette, I kind of joked, oh look, it's gonna be another like all brown palette. And this isn't all brown, it's really not. It has one entire row that's all purples that I was looking at that I'm like, oh my God, I love purple, I need this palette. And then I stopped myself and I went, nope, nope, wait a minute. Don't buy a palette if you're only gonna use one row of colors. There'll be three color, three rows of colors that are just sitting there that you're not gonna to touch. I do really feel like those three colors have been done to death and that they are in so many different palettes. It's just kind of like repetitive and boring. I basically feel if you bought colors at all during 2016 and 2017, you will have all of those oranges and browns. And you may already have them in duplicate or triplicate, so I'm not really sure why they are there. It's just not worth it to me personally to buy a palette for one row of eyeshadow. If it had been an all purple palette, I would have bought it. You better believe I would have bought it. I would have been like, hell yes, give me that palette. Especially if it's the same quality as the Violet Voss Drenched Metals palette because I love that palette. I think it's a great palette. I was so sad that Violet Voss discontinued it because it was like their only colorful palette. Next up is the ColourPop Give It To Me Straight palette. Now, initially I was excited because somebody said, hey, look, ColourPop's coming out with a berries palette. Then I saw the swatches and it's completely a yawn because basically it's a bunch of browns and then you have a brownish berry and a plum brown. You don't really have any what I would consider true berries. If you haven't seen it yet, you should check out my eyeshadow collection video, but I have a sauce box forbidden fruits palette, which is true berries. You got a red, you got a pink, you got purples. It's gorgeous. That's berries. Berries are not just brown. If you look at berries in nature, you got strawberries, which are kind of red. You've got raspberries, you know, you got like real color. It's not just brown or brownish red or brownish purple. They had so much potential, but it sucks. So then I was looking at the Tarte Goal Getters brush set, and that's because it's glittery, and I, you know, I do really like glitter. And I did recently just buy the Real Techniques purple, um, I can't remember what this is called, like Insta Glam or something, but I really, really love this. This is sealed, the purple glitter doesn't come off. Unfortunately, Tarte skimped out on their Goal, Get their Goal Getters brush set because the glitter comes off on your hands, which is pretty gross. It should have been sealed. That's a, that's a complete skip for me. And on that note, I'm pretty much thinking that I am done with Tarte, at least for now. The fact that they came out with their Shape Tape Foundation and Hydrating in matte, and it's like 24 shades of beige and then all the rest are orange. No, no thank you. I think it's absolutely absolutely ridiculous that they don't have shades for deeper complexions. I watched Jackie Iana's video and Alicia Ashley's video, and the foundation looks straight up orange on them. No, that is not what foundation should look like on deep skin. It should not be ashy and it should not be orange. That needs to be fixed. Plus there was a huge jump like in, you have like all of these light medium shades and then you jump down to deep, but the deep shades don't even work. So sad. Get it together, Tarte, fix it. So next up is the Balm Meat Matchmaker palette. I actually thought this palette might be cute, but I don't own any Balm palette, but I don't own any Balm eyeshadow pa palettes. So this is probably why. Once I saw the swatches, I was bored. 
So initially, I really like the idea of the Balm Meat Matchmaker palette. It's the idea of, of mattes paired with per perfectly coordinated shimmers. And then I saw the swatches. No. I only really like the olive green, the emerald green, the plum and the pink. That's really not enough for me to buy a palette. I feel like the rest of the shades were just too boring for me to even want to touch. Next up would be the OPV Beauty Ocean Palette. I was really excited to discover a brand new cruelty-free brand. And then I saw the palette they put out and I'm like, why? This new palette is launching soon, but it's like all browns and oranges. These colors have been done to death. I'm sure at this point, every makeup lover has enough browns and orange that we could paint an entire army. Now I know the Lucky Mystery Bag already happened, but I wanted to touch on this, basically any mystery bag. I don't like them. I think that they are a waste of money. I've never not been disappointed when I've done it. I've done it a couple times. I did it with, with Pure. I couldn't use anything. Basically their mystery bag was like, pick you know your skin tone, fair, light, medium, deep whatever. Everything I picked was too dark for me. So I was like, this is really sucky. I just wasted money on this bag and I couldn't even return it. I've seen a lot of people who got their lucky bags complaining about what they got too. So I just feel like it's a really high price tag for a mystery bag filled with what may, may be great or maybe shit. So it's not worth it to me to spend money on it. Okay. Next up is the Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle lipsticks. Now I was disappointed with every single Fenty Beauty purchase that I made last year, except for my highlighter brush. I love this brush. I skipped the lipstick for two reasons, although I did end up getting free samples from Sephora, which is completely different because at least then I can try, try them without buying them. The reason I didn't want to purchase anything was that I didn't see any unique shades. I pretty much wear my Urban Decay lipstick all the time. And so if there's not like a unique shade that I don't already, already own, I don't really want to pick it up. So the freebies I did end up with were Mademoiselle. And I feel like there was another one in my Sephora Get Give Me Lip Kit. I'll have to check and see what it is, but I haven't tried them yet. So at least I'll be able to try them. I just figured if I was already disappointed with the formula of so many other products for theirs because I was disappointed with their foundation. I was disappointed with their matchstick concealer. Um, I was disappointed with their highlighter that I just shouldn't even, or, and dis disappointed with their contour. And I just, I shouldn't even bother with the lipsticks. I really wanted to love, you know, everything from the brand. And so far, other than my highlighter brush, I haven't. It's just, it hasn't worked. Nothing has worked for me, which sucks. Next up is the Color Rain Cheers to the Beauty palette. Now this palette really legit confused me. I thought the Queen of Hearts palette and the Very Cute palette were, you know, pretty good quality. I really liked them. I didn't like the weird ass orange shade that ended up being in, in the Very Cute palette. I felt like it was a little out of place, but overall I felt like it was a good quality. They were good quality palettes. They had good colors, um, especially the Queen of Hearts palette. The, the formula feels, feels very buttery. But when I went to go look at this new Cheers to the Beauty palette, I felt like half, the, almost half the colors in it were repeats for the Queen of Hearts. So why would you buy it unless you missed out on the Queen of Hearts the first time? I mean, I love silvers and blues. Don't get me wrong. Those are my kind of colors. I like cooler tones, but I don't want to buy another palette with a bunch of shades I already own. It just isn't appealing to me. And last but not least is the Beauty Bakery Do It For The Gram palette. Now, I really like Beauty Bakery. I love the fact that they have their little ice cream eyeshadows because I've bought a couple of those and they work really well for me. They're a really nice cream eyeshadow formula. Um, they make really inclusive like products with their concealers and their brows. So I feel like they do a really good job at being an inclusive beauty brand. But looking at this palette just made me sad. Yes, it has a couple pretty duochromes, which you know, I am a sucker for duochromes. I love duochromes. But the rest of the palette was so just overwhelmingly brown and orange and I hate those colors. I really do. So I just didn't feel like it was worth it for me to buy this palette for just three colors. And on a personal note, I, I really do find colors like warm brown, orange and yellow, very difficult to wear. I think it's because I'm neutral or neutral, cool yellow skin tone. And those colors just don't look good on me. They go muddy. It's they're very difficult to wear. I find it much easier to put on purples or pinks or duochromes or silvers. Those colors I think look really nice on me, but brown, orange, and yellow. No, they're like my nightmare colors. Ugh. So anyway, that wraps up my anti-haul number 13. Please be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found this video fun or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and share. I love it when you share my videos and it really helps me out. So thank you so much for doing that. And if you haven't already, click on that little subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.